Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to follow up from a video I did a few days ago which was installing Ubuntu 22.04.2 Jamie Jellyfish. In that video I mentioned that the install process was not identical for the desktop version as it was for the server version and that's due to the fact that the desktop version has a GUI based operating system while the version of Ubuntu server is primarily a text based interface. The install specs are slightly different as well, so you only need a 1 GHz or better CPU, 1 GB of memory or more, and a minimum of 2.5 GB of disk space, but you can alter those to suit your needs. You install the desktop version and the server version the same way, with an ISO file with either a bootable USB or installing it via a virtual machine. The only difference is, is that the desktop version is tailored towards end users, day-to-day -day activities, whereas the server version is marketed more towards businesses, where you would host a website or host a file server. You can do those things with the desktop version, but because this version has no GUI, it is optimized for performance, so you don't need to worry about loading the background desktop. You don't need to load you don't need to worry about loading 20 Chrome tabs. Ubuntu server does one, maybe two things. It's a web server, it's a file server, it's not a internet box, it's not an email box, it's not a Twitter machine or an X machine. Uh, I, I think they've changed the, the name of the website now. <laughs> so with all that in mind, let's get this installed. For the process of this demonstration, I'll be using VirtualBox to run the installation. But if you'd like to follow along, you can use your virtual platform of choice or a physical device. If you want help with VirtualBox, I have a link in the description to a video that I made for a beginner's guide. And I also have a guide on how to create a bootable USB if you need assistance with that as well. Once you've booted to this screen, you'll just have to hit enter to try or install Ubuntu server. Next up, you're gonna choose your language. I speak two languages, English and bad English, but bad English isn't an option here. So we're just gonna select English. You can choose whichever language you want on your own device. Next up, you're asked if you want to try out the new installer or continue without updating. I always select the new installer because I like new and improved things. So that's just going to go ahead and download that and then use the new installer. Next up is your keyboard configuration. I have English US, like 32% of the rest of the world, but you could be in that elite top 1% of Dvorak users. You can go ahead and change that here, but I'm just going to select English US. On the next screen, you're prompted for the version of server you want to install. So unless you know what you're doing, just go ahead and go with the standard install. And I would say that with a lot of software, actually. Um, in this case, the minimized version has fewer programs out of the gate. It's about 50% smaller. And if you're using this on Microsoft Azure, they say that it boots 40% faster. You can install all the programs that you need with an apt-get command or a snap command, but if you don't need the speed, and you just want something that works out of the gate, just go with the standard. Next up, you've got your IP address. One is generated automatically for you, but you can get a static IP address by going up to the menu here and then editing the IPv4 address. But we're just gonna stick with what the good Linux RNG gods gave us. Next up is a proxy address. If you don't need one, you can skip this, but if you do need one, you can go ahead and add this in now. Next up is your mirror address. Ubuntu Archive Mirror is a server that stores a copy of the entire Ubuntu repository, which contains all of the software packages, updates, security patches for Ubuntu. The mirrors are geographically distributed and maintained by various organizations and institutions around the world. You don't need to worry about this. Ubuntu will just pick the best one for you, but if you have an address that you prefer, you can go ahead and add this in now. Next up, you're prompted to configure your disk. Now the first option will wipe your hard drive and install the operating system on the disk. So if you have anything on that drive now, files, movies, pictures, documents, anything, back those up now if you haven't already. You can also do a custom storage layout, which lets you choose if you wanna use the whole disk, if you wanna split the disk, if you wanna use half for storage, if you wanna do a dual boot. I think I said this in the last video, but if you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. And if you don't need to do it, you probably shouldn't do it anyway. Unless you absolutely need to, just stick with the simple option. Don't try and over, don't try and overcomplicate things that you don't need to complicate. 
Next up is who are you? What's your username, server name, password? Pop all that information in and then go to the next page. On the next page, you've got Ubuntu asking you if you want to enable Ubuntu Pro. This is a $25 a month subscription from Ubuntu that gives you 24 hour support on the operating system. If you're a large company, get it. If, you, if you're any company really actually, you should probably get it. I think it's a tax write off, but don't, don't quote me on that. I'm not a tax guy, I'm a tech guy. It's one of those things where you don't really know that you need it until you need it. And once you have it and you need it, you're glad that you had it. I haven't used it, but I do know someone who has used it and they're very happy with the service. I'm not trying to plug it. I'm just letting you know what my experiences with the service are. Next up, we can install OpenSSH. This is a must if you want to connect to your server on any machine, but the one that you're installing it on. Once you've installed this, you'll be able to connect to your server via SSH. SSH or Secure Shell is a protocol used for remote access and you can access the server as long as you're on the same network or if the server has a public IP, you can use the SSH command followed by your username, the at symbol, and then the IP address for the server. For instance, um, SSH admin at 10.1.1.100. You can do this on command prompt, terminal, or even in PowerShell. It will give you remote access to the server, so it's essential, especially if you don't intend on having a keyboard or a monitor connected to the computer. Next up, we have different services that you can install during the install. I can see that there is Nextcloud, which is a private cloud option that you can take advantage of. You've got Docker, PowerShell, and a couple of useful services that we're gonna skip over for now. We're just gonna install the very basics here. The server's going to do its own thing now and run through the installation. Once that's done, it'll prompt you for a restart. I'm going to cut here and come back once it's done all that. Okay, so I'm back. I did a restart of the server and now we're at the login prompt here. So let's go ahead and pop in our username and password that we set, in, set up earlier. And we can see that this is now up and running and we have an IP address 10.0.2.15. What you'll want to do now is just to make sure that everything's up to date. So you'll want to type the command sudo apt update and then password. And this is just going to make sure that everything is up to date. Another thing we can do is we can do sudo apt upgrade to upgrade any software packages that need upgrading. Then hit yes or why. Okay, so I'm back. I went and took a long walk and grabbed a cup of tea. And when I came back, the server was now ready for use. Everything that we upgraded was upgraded and everything that we updated was updated. So now we can log in using our username and password. And off camera, I did actually update the network connection in my virtual box. So it's no longer using a network network. It's using a bridged adapter. So we've got a different IP address that won't affect the tutorial. It's just that I know that someone will notice it in the comments. So this is essentially good to go. If I had a server set up in a data center, my job is essentially done. I could unplug my equipment and go home. But before I go home, I just want to make sure that I can actually connect to it. So let's go ahead and open up PowerShell here and see if we can SSH to that server. So let's have a look here. So the IP address for that is 192.168.56.101. So let's go ahead and SSH into Ubuntu dash server at 192.168.56.101. Perfect, and so this is asking us if we want to connect. So we're going to type in yes, 
And then we're going to type in the password, which is this. And excellent. So what we can see here is that we are now securely logged in through the PowerShell window. So we can see that this information is pretty much identical to the information that's in the Linux terminal here. So let's go ahead and type in who am I? We are Ubuntu server. There we go. So we are remotely connected to this server through PowerShell. So we can go ahead and we can close this window here. And that's essentially the setup of the server. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, and if you'd learned something, please give me a like or subscribe. Please pop any questions that you might have in the comments down below. And thank you for joining me on the journey today. As always, keep learning and take care.